WWE in total denial about AEW ratings. We have new details on NXT fans allegedly sabotaging MSK and the reason for a Raw star's sudden absence. It's in the wrestling news right now. AEW did rather well in the ratings last Friday. Now, SmackDown were always going to win the ratings. Yeah. They were always going to win. But uh, for a relatively new B show, which I, I still say Rampage is, mm -hmm. uh, up against an established A show, that was a very good result. Yeah, without a doubt. And I mean, how could it not be with the uh, with the colour of matches they put on that night? Ooh. Absolutely. SmackDown won the overall ratings, but it was a, a great a great win for wrestling in general. What's lots of eyes watching wrestling. And surely, as wrestling fans, whichever side of the, the wall <gasps> you are on... <gasps> Not, not the wrestler, obviously. <laughs> um, we can all agree we like people watching wrestling. Yeah. Uh, the Observer writes today, um, in regards to how WWE took the news of the strong ratings result for AEW Rampage, as far as the key personnel, it was described as being in total denial. Basically, the line Roman Reigns said on SmackDown about we appeal to more people and their fan base is small, can't grow, our stuff appeals to more people and their product is bad, it's propped up by their fan base. This is, this is, he didn't say that on SmackDown, he said that and interviewed with Roman Reigns. And that's kind of the, the company rhetoric when it comes to AEW. Uh, they Later in the Observer, Dave also says, it's noted that with what the top guys in WWE are earning, the belief is that Tony Khan simply cannot compete. It's still the belief that this is a fluke and not really happening. And, and that's, that seems to be a, a little bit of the conversation around the ratings of AEW, mm. that this is just, you know, that this is, a, you do get... And, and, and I'm looking at it across all sides. Yeah. You do get when anything new starts, you get that yeah, of course spike. You do. You, yeah. do. you know, we do stuff on Twitch and you see at the initial, the start of the stream, like, way, and then they just, hey. everything just travels. It's this video, when when you look at the analytics for this video, it'll be here, because that's how it, most videos mm -hmm. and stuff go. And, you know, we don't want it to go too far down because then we all lose our jobs. <laughs> but what is it? But that's just naturally what happens. Yeah. But there is that natural interest Mm -hmm. spike with AEW and what they've got to do now is if they want to keep those figures high is to mm -hmm. do stuff to maintain that audience and keep growing it but right now WWE genuinely of the belief that this is all uh, a fluke and the figures aren't anything to think about if anything the figures are fine I everything's don't. fine mm. Actually, what do you reckon my, my, my take is on it is that I don't think WWE can necessarily just be as blase about this as I mean there's obviously a reason that they've been on top for as long as they've been on top, but they haven't had the competition. They haven't had true competition like this in many, many, many years. Mm. And uh, I really don't think you can push AEW to the side and not really like take these things seriously, you know? Also, at the same time, competition is healthy too because then it breeds just, just a nice, big yeah. plethora of wrestling for everybody to enjoy as Everyone's well. Everyone's working harder with yeah, competition. Yeah, of course. You know, and everybody wins in mm -hmm. that sense. But WWE, uh, according to sources, is very much in denial about some of the steps and the strides that AEW are current taking. Mm. Uh, we t we talked yesterday on the wrestling news uh, about MSK. Uh, there was a story uh, that started off on forums and on Reddit about how fans uh, were sabotaging allegedly uh, the push of MSK. Mm. A sect of fans uh, were booing MSK, and the story was that this was something that was uh, that was led by the family of Izzy, the Bailey girl. This was the story we did yesterday, uh, and following uh, comments by. By MSK saying that Bailey was too young to wrestle. Uh, this led to a, a groundswell of support for Bailey and boost towards MSK. Oh, is he? Is he? So, yeah, sorry, ground, yeah. <laughs> ground swell towards Bailey. Did I say Bailey? You said Bailey, yeah. Oh, well, I meant sorry. Izzy the Bailey girl. <laughs> yeah, of course. Izzy. We, we get it. it. We There's get always it. a ground swell for Bailey. She's brilliant. <laughs> she is. The ground swell towards Izzy and, and boost towards MSK. Mm. Um, so we ran this story yesterday. Uh, we had... Um, we had a message on our our Twitter, our <laughs> private message on Twitter. They wish to remain anonymous, so we're not going to say who they are. Uh, but this is, but they've sort of added. They've they've said, well, this is the real story behind that. And then I'm going to read what the message says. It started with six of us. 
and we are the loudest six in the CWC. We outnumber 294 to six, but you will hear us during, during the majority, uh, due, due to the majority not cheering. We were upset that MSK debuted at the Dusty Classic without Trey Miguel. He's amazing on the mic and even more amazing in the ring and the heart and soul of, they've put the radicals, I'm sure you mean the rascals, unless we're back in 2000. <laughs> so when they came out without him, we were upset but were impressed with MSK's first match. In round two of the Dusty Classic, they had to face Legado del Fantasma. If you watch any NXT episode, whenever Legado del Fantasma came out, we cheered louder and more for them than anyone else. MSK was facing them in the second round and beat them, so we booed them because our wrestling faction lost. Uh, then MSK faced Grizzled Young Veterans and Legado del Fantasma, and we booed them because they were going against our favorite team and beat them. And it came to a point where we saw MSK as our rivals, like any sporting event when your rivals come out, you boo them. I cannot apologize for cheering who I like and booing who I don't like. On behalf of the wrestling community, I would like to apologize to Izzy and her family. When this made up post hit the internet, the hate and threats and disgusting comments came out about that family. As a wrestling fan, it was hard to read and see grown men attacking and threatening a child. I said before, cheer who you want and boo who you want, but it is unacceptable to threaten a child living out her dreams. So that's based on a story from yesterday, as again, they want to remain anonymous there. I think it kind of leads into that idea that the, the, the CWC has always had some of the loudest, more passionate yeah, fans, you doubt. know, and sometimes that passion can be taken to, uh, the, to, to, to an extreme. Mm. And I think that kind of was what came through there. So. Normally, if there's a group, you know, I've been to wrestling shows and I know how this rolls. And if, if there is a, a, a group of louder wrestling fans, yeah. they can tend to lead the audience. Yeah, I course. should know because I have been on a few occasions one of those gong that have led a wrestling chant in one way or another. <laughs> I was, I did, I remember doing a North show. And I thought this would be quite, I've had an idea for a fun chant. Yeah. So I got me and a friend of mine to start it. And I did it simply so I could announce on the commentary what a fun chant that was. Commentary that I was recording oh, a few weeks later. Clever, <laughs> clever boy. I am big and I ain't clever. Look, cheer you want, boo you want, but don't be, a, don't, yeah. don't, don't be a dick. Don't be silly. Many thanks, yours, etc. Tom and Andrew from Cold Heart Lake. <laughs> Uh, Rampage coming up this weekend, and there are lots of people raving about one particular match that's already been taped. Isn't that? Look at this. Look at this. Oh, it's the happy. It's good. The happy dance. It's the good. happy dance. I'm excited, Tom. It's Ram Pack versus Andrade. This is on Rampage tonight. <gasps> yes. My goodness. Do you know what these two together? They do the lovely things, Tom. They do mm. the lovely things. And yeah, so uh, the Observer, Wrestling Observer here telling you, let me tell you, Tom, you let sit back. Let me tell you something. You sit brother. back, there we go. So the Observer, here we go. Talent management and fans at the show were raving to me about the Andrade raving. versus Pac match. Raving! The rematch that was Slow saved. down, Maurice. Oh, on the 10th of uh, October that airs on the 22nd of October, which is, what is that? What day is that? That's today, I tell that's me. That's the today, uh, That's the today, that's the today show. Uh, people who were texting me star ratings from the match had it at four and a half to five stars with most saying it was the best rampage match to date. I've also heard from other sources that like people are arguing whether who, who saw it are saying whether or not this is better than Danielson versus Omega. Wow. Wow. So high praise high indeed. High praises indeed. Definitely the best rampage match, possibly the best or the second best match in Dynamite history then. Wow. That is, that's, oh. that's mental to even think about, isn't it? I can't wait to see it. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm so I, 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 there's something to be said for when a ma when a show gets taped that there is that little drop off in intrigue. Yes. When that does happen, but I must admit, when when the leak is, hey, these two have an amazing wrestling mm. match. I'm a big fan of amazing wrestling matches. Yeah. I'm going to watch an amazing Definitely. wrestling match. Uh, Final more, Eva Marie. Where is she? 
she? She's gone. She's, she's just gone. She's, she's vanished <laughs> into the ether. No. She got battered by Shayna Baszler, she and did. now she's nowhere. So why has she suddenly disappeared from Monday Night Raw? So you know, she's been so she's been written off because, as you said, with the injury, and she's not been drafted anywhere because Tom, she's working on a movie for a little Ooh. while. Ooh, so we're not going to see. So Eva Marie sort of off Monday Night Raw for a while. That's why she was left off the draft. Yeah. And that's why she's not factored into anything else with do drop going that's forward. It. So that, I mean, you know, she's not long come back to WWE and then she's off again. I'll see you in a bit. I mean, yeah. Fair it's, enough. This, I mean, purpose served seemed to be just to bring Dewdrop in. Literally. Kind of seemed to be her fate accomplished. Yes. I don't know. I wonder if they'll do something when she's finished filming this movie, if they'll do something more sort of going forward. I think, personally, she, she in my opinion, she'd just be fantastic as a very good heel manager. I think she'd be mm. so good in that role. I just feel like the okay, like the Eva, like yeah, you know, we all have opinions on Eve Marie and mm-hmm. whether or not she's a good wrestler, whether she's right for a product or not, and the do drop stuff. We all have our opinions on it. Mm-hmm. But there's part of me that thinks, you know, could that not have run a little bit? Like, like uh, whether or not. I know people will go, mm-hmm. but like there is. I've just always gravitated to long term booking, and I yes. feel like. You know, you could have. I would wouldn't have minded seeing sort of the the the, the more organic push of Dewdrop and people yeah. more and more get behind her as just this under the thumb of Eva mm-hmm. Marie type character that eventually bursts through. I mean, that's kind of what we got, but we got it a million miles. It was an very hour. diluted, wasn't it? Like it was. Yeah. You, you get you get your a little drop of Ribena and then a lot of water. Analogy is right there. I like I like that. I like have you ever tried, have you ever drank neat Ribena? Uh yeah, it's very strong. It's been it makes People, I don't know if this is true, but my mum was like, don't drink uh just neat neat ribena or fruit juice because it'll kill you. And I was like, oh, <laughs> Fair enough, I'll do that. That's incredible, Yorkshire <laughs> Yorkshire mum advice. Son, come, come to mother. Come to mother's son. Remember as you go forward in this life, don't drink neat Ribena, because you'll die. Not only that, she was like, I remember when, right, I'm petrified of spiders. Look at this, doing wrestling news here. Petrified of spiders. She was like, uh, and then the eight-legged news is freaks finished, thing by the way. Yeah, then the eight-legged <laughs> freaks advert came on TV, <gasps> right? And I'm petrified of spiders. Like, they're massive, obviously, eating people. And I was like, Mum, can spiders grow that big? And she was like, yeah. <laughs> 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 I had a mate whose dad said to him, you listen to me, right, son? If, if any bullies give you trouble, if, before they hit you, you hit them first. He was suspended a week later for being a bully. <laughs> 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 wah, wah, wah. Oh. Have a great weekend. Keys, keys. Love you, bye.